times have changed and the old ways of building a portfolio, they don't apply to today's day and age. Main reason for this is that interest rates have skyrocketed. So buying a house, much less making profit on one, seems so far-fetched. But I'm here to give you good news. It's not game over. But even with this in mind, I'm sure you're asking yourself, does it even make sense to buy real estate in 2024? Let's find out. Welcome, my name is John Paul Gutierrez, your real estate investment specialist in the Sunshine State of Florida. If you didn't know that, it's probably your first time on this channel. I wanna give you a big open arm welcome, let you know that on this channel, my aim is to give you the most transparent real estate investment advice in the state of Florida through home tours and informational videos. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you subscribe because I think you have found your investment home. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about investing in real estate in 2024 and what that's looking like. Whether you're buying your very first home to live in or you've bought hundreds of homes or you're just looking to add to your portfolio, I think this video is gonna help you out a lot. And I wanna start off by giving you a little bit of information before we dive in to my two tips to buying a home this year. It's no secret that the national median income has not risen at the same rate that the national home price average has. As a matter of fact, since the 70s, the national median income has barely risen. Meanwhile, home prices have more than doubled. Now, something really interesting happened right around 2019. And you're right, it has to do with COVID. During that time, interest rates fell super, super low. And what that meant was that more people were qualifying to buy homes and qualifying at an even higher price. What this means is that with more buyers fluctuating the market, the home prices, as you know, skyrocketed. In essence, what happened is that the supply couldn't keep up with the demand. And when that happens, the price of what is supplied goes way, way up. Then we arrived to 2023 and we saw a unique set of circumstances. Essentially what happened is that as interest rates began to regulate, so did home prices. So as interest rates rised, home prices began to fall. Now, because of such a high demand during COVID, a lot of new construction builders began to buy large lots of land and subdividing them to build large communities. Builders like DR Horton, Lennar, and Pulte Homes, for example. Now, as prices continued to decrease, these builders are still building and interest rates went up However, they found a way to break through what's happening in the market, which brings us into 2024 with a very unique set of circumstances. These builders are still building. They already have permitting, lots, and plats already built out for these large communities. However, the Federal Reserve has already promised that interest rates will go down at least three times in 2024. This presents us with a very unique set of circumstances. Essentially, the supply is still growing, but as interest rates are going down, supply is still going up, and guess what? Demand is gonna go up as well which is a correlation that we haven't seen. Now, what these builders did during 2023 was incentivize buyers, even though there were harsh terms in the market. So these builders started offering closing cost incentives, decreased prices, and even interest rate buy downs. Now, once these new construction homes are built, the builder doesn't wanna hold on to them. As a matter of fact, the longer they hold them, the more money they lose, which is obviously not their objective. What this means for 2024 is a continuation of incentivized buying. There will still be a high supply, more buyers in the market. However, these builders are gonna to continue to give closing cost contributions, lowered prices, and you guessed it, interest rate buy downs. Now, as interest rates decrease across the board, this is not only gonna incentivize new buyers, but also homeowners, anybody who wants to refinance and also sell their home to get into a new one. Now, I'm sure you fall into one of these categories, someone looking to buy a home, or maybe someone even looking to sell or refinance their current home. Now, with this information in mind, I think it is absolutely crucial that we identify two things, whether you're buying or selling, to know whether or not 2024 is the right time for you to make a move in real estate. The first thing you're gonna wanna take a look at is yourself, honestly, and analyze what your goal is. If you don't own a home, are you looking to own a primary residence that you're gonna move into by yourself or with your family? And if you do own a home, are you looking to acquire a second property, an investment, or do you wanna refinance, maybe downsize and sell? That's what's really gonna dictate how you make your move in 2024. 
Once you've pinpointed your goal, the next thing is to budget accordingly. So if you're looking to buy your first home or a primary residence, there's gonna be multiple ways that you can go about it. The first is gonna be buying cash, in which case you're gonna have quite an advantage over the rest of buyers, which means you can negotiate very, very aggressively. And on top of your purchase price, don't forget to account for closing costs, whether you're buying with a loan or buying cash, it's good to count on paying 3% of the total price of the home in closing costs. If you're not looking to buy in cash, but rather finance, I'm here to tell you, you have many options. The first is an FHA loan. On an FHA loan, you're only gonna need 3.5% down. That means on a $100,000 home, you'll only need $3,500 as a down payment. Now, additionally to that, again, you're gonna have closing costs, which would be another 3%. So you're gonna want 6.5% of the home price budgeted to close on this home. Your next option is gonna be a conventional loan. If it's your primary residence, you can count on putting 5% down. So again, on a $100,000 home, that'll be $5,000 plus your closing costs. If this is a secondary home you're looking to purchase, you'll only need 10% down on a conventional loan. So on a $100,000 house, that's $10,000. Now, if you're looking to purchase a home as an investment, you're also gonna have multiple options. The first one is gonna be a conventional investment loan. That one's gonna require 20% down on average. That 20% down on a $100,000 home would be $20,000 and you're still gonna have those closing costs. Other ways to finance an investment property is gonna be through a DSCR loan. That is a debt service coverage ratio loan. And this is great if maybe you have a higher debt to income ratio because the bank isn't gonna take your debts into account. What the bank is gonna do is make a rental analysis on the property. And they're gonna look at what the income potential is on the property versus your mortgage payment. And if it balances out or you make profit, they'll give you the loan and they won't even look at your debts. Additionally, if you're looking for something like a fix and flip or you're looking to purchase a property that is maybe in foreclosure or that requires cash, but you don't have all the cash, well, you have a hard money lender. Well, you have hard money lending. This is private money. The terms on these vary because typically it's a private fund of investors who are funding these projects looking solely at the numbers of the investment. So if the numbers make sense, they'll give you better loan terms, ranging anywhere from 10% down all the way to 50% down. Now these are shorter term loans, typically 12 month loans with higher interest rates, but they'll allow you to pick up a property that can only be purchased in cash without having the entire sum of cash. Additionally, they'll even let you borrow money to rehab or remodel the entire property. Now, regardless which one of these purchasing options you are looking at, on average, you're gonna wanna have about a 650 credit score in order to purchase but the terms really favor you once you're in that 750 or above range. Now, the next thing that I think is gonna be actually the most important part of buying a home in 2024 is building the right team. The first person you're gonna want on your team is a good realtor. The reason being is that they should be able to help you set up the rest of the team. The good realtor is not only gonna be able to negotiate the best price, but find you exactly what you're looking for, whether it's your primary residence or an investment. A good realtor and their team is gonna be able to give you an analysis of properties in the same area, crime rates, income potential, and any other analysis that you may need, whether you're looking to live there yourself or purchase it as an investment. A real estate professional is gonna be number one on your list to make a move in 2024. And the most important part besides accolades is gonna be that you can trust them. Next person that you're gonna want on your team is gonna be a good lender to make sure that you have the financing in order and it is reliable when you find the perfect opportunity this year. A good lender is gonna have multiple options that they can offer you and they're gonna be able to explain everything to you to the point where it makes sense for you. Now, if you're looking for an investment specifically, there's gonna be a few more people you want on your team. First one is gonna be a GC or a general contractor. What this person is gonna be able to do is pull permits, give you real estimates, and do the work on your investment properties if needed. Particularly if you're looking to fix and flip or buy rentals with a lot of equity, they're typically gonna be in pretty rough shape. So you're gonna need someone that can come in and get the job done right. The next person you're gonna need if you are looking to rent properties is gonna be a handyman. Someone you can count on if something goes wrong in the house and they're gonna be able to figure it out so that your tenants don't have any problems. The next person you're gonna want on your team is a property manager. 
whether you're doing short-term or long-term rentals as an investor, you're gonna want someone who can take care of all the contracts, all the nitty-gritty details to where you can sit back, relax, and cash flow, receiving reports from your property managers and making sure that your property is protected. And last but not least, if you're an investor, you're gonna want some good partners. Whether they're helping you financially, maybe they bring the ideas or bring you even more opportunities, you're gonna want partners who encourage you and who help you especially in the places where you may not be the strongest. So now that you've identified your goal, you've budgeted accordingly, and you've built your team, I think there's only one missing piece to decide whether 2024 is the year for you. Now, I think 2024 actually provides us an excellent opportunity to get into real estate. And once you've analyzed your goal, budgeted accordingly, and built your team, I think the most important piece of this puzzle is going to be mindset. I believe that no market condition should dictate your outcome. It should only dictate your approach. And I think if you're looking to buy your first home, don't overpay. There are plenty of options and I'm sure you'll find the one that's perfect for you. And don't feel like you have to be landlocked to that property forever. Look for something that makes sense for you right now. And if you need to increase or decrease the size, remember that you can always buy and sell again. If you're looking to invest, same goes for you. Don't overpay. Make sure you do a full analysis of the property and the area. And that doesn't only mean looking at the crime rate. It also means looking at the incomes, the job opportunities, the growth opportunities, and where the cities that you're looking to invest in are heading. Be conservative with your numbers. If you're looking to rehab a project, make sure you factor in a little bit more for any miscellaneous costs. And if you're looking to fix and flip, make sure your ARVs or your after repair value is a little bit more conservative. I would suggest adjusting 10% for any comps over three months. But overall, the best part of 2024 is that with so much technology, so much transparency, and so much at your disposal, there are infinite opportunities to learn, not only for yourself, but from others. So my biggest thing in 2024, if you're looking to buy a home or invest in real estate, do your research. And if you need help, feel free to contact our team. We would love to help you acquire your first or next investment opportunity. Thank you guys so much for staying until the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and were able to gain some valuable information. If so, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel. We have plenty more content coming for you throughout the whole year from informational videos to home tours. We want to help you find your next investment opportunity. So make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so we can help you find your next help. Take care.